The Little Company is a indie horror co-op title released as Early Access in late 2023. The price of the game itself won't break the bank, so it's quite tempting to buy a copy of it and have some fun online with your friends. If the system requirements put you off, however, well, this video will bring some good news for everybody rocking older hardware in both GPU and CPU departments. For the GPU selection, I wanted to test the lowest of the lowest, so I went for a bunch of cars that do not have PCIe power connectors. The HD 6670, the only terascale to architecture based car that I own that does not have a power connector. The R7250, based on the GCN1 architecture, also powered by the PCIe slot alone. The HD 7750, also using the GCN1 architecture but trading maximum frequency for more shader cores. The RX 460, using the GCN4 architecture aka Polaris. As for the CPU, I decided to use the Core i5-2400, seen previously on the channel, then the Haswell Xeon E3-1241 V3. Later in the video we'll see how relevant the CPU choice really is. Now, we need to talk a bit about the game settings. I would typically test at 3 resolutions, 1080, 1600x900 and 720. The game itself does not have a way to change the resolution. What I did was then to change the resolution in the desktop, then in-game switch to windowed full screen then back to full screen. And according to the ever increasing size of the Riva Tuner statistics server overlay, it seems to have worked. But we'll get back to this later. For now, the first set of results at full 1080 resolution. I was happy to see that the GCN cars managed an average above 30 FPS, which I found to be quite adequate for this lower paced game. So at least in terms of GPU, the official system requirements is quite um, conservative. As for why we have 0 for the Terrascale 2 card, well, unfortunately, while the game did start, as in it rendered 3D contents, it constantly crashed before making it to the moon used for benchmark. Switching from the latest beta drivers available for it, Crimson 16.2.1, to the latest VHQL one, 15.7.1, did not help. Unsurprisingly, the RX 460 performs the best out of the selected cards, with 70 FPS for the average and 53 41% lows. What I notice is that, at least for these cards and at this resolution, the game performed fully GPU bottlenecked. 1600 by 900 is a non-trivial reduction in resolution or pixel count, and in such a strongly GPU bound scenario, one would expect a non-trivial increase in the FPS. That is not the case, and while the FPS did improve, it did that by about 5% on average. And with a CPU usage well under 70% for the Sandy Bridge i5, or well under 50% for the Haswell CPU, we can't really talk about the system bottleneck. More on that later, and keep in mind that usage percentage is a poor indication of a bottleneck. The performance gradient according to the variable is however the best method to detect what component is the weakest link. 720 resolution has half the pixels of 1080, but as you probably suspect already, there was little change in the performance numbers. And by little, I mean a paltry 10% improvement. Getting about the same results at all resolutions makes the CPU as the primary suspect for a bottleneck. However, I've seen the hassle based Xeon performing significantly better in games with higher polygon counts. And also, better performing GPUs like the RX 460 does provide better performance by both metric used, average FPS and 1% lows. To add to that, the test for determining the CPU requirements involved the Core i5-2400 for the CPU and an unnamed but significantly faster GPU than what we tested with up to this point. And lo and behold, the slower CPU coupled with the faster GPU provided better frame rates by a factor of 3 when compared to the R7250 and HD7750. So, let's first wrap up with the system requirements. The Core i5-7500 mentioned is probably the slowest CPU the developers have access to. Listing it in the system specs is honest, but way too conservative. Send the bridge Core i5 CPUs will run this one just fine. As for GPUs, this all boils down to the targeted FPS. If it's 30, then the GCN1 era based GPUs will do just fine, and it's very likely that Kepler GPUs will perform similarly. As for the behavior towards resolution change, well, the game is GPU bound, a faster GPU got better performance metrics. The fact that the performance doesn't change with the resolution would indicate that the game itself is rendered at an internal fixed resolution and then scaled to the display's resolution. This is more likely a choice offered by the game engine, and it could be subject to change. 
And while I'm happy to know that all CPUs and all GPUs seem to run the game just fine, I have to ask for some Fs in the comments for the HD6670. Despite the game listing DirectX 11 as requirement, this old Radeon won't cut it. I plan to run a few more tests on a few other cards, but from the other team. I also need to confirm if TerraScale 2 cards are all unusable, or if the HD6670 was just a fluke. Make sure to subscribe if you're interested in this. As for this one, well, we're done. Thank you for your time, I hope you liked it, and I'll see you.